it's Mike Gardner from Gardner's Challenger Service in Gray, Tennessee. Today we are going to unbox a brand new Crossman Challenger PCP air rifle. We're going to show you what uh, comes in the box, what comes with the air rifle. We're also going to show you a little bit of care and maintenance of the air rifle for keeping this air rifle living a long, long time. All right. This rifle comes in another box. Crossman packages our rifles very well, so we've already taken that box off. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up the air rifle. And voila! There she is. Uh, let's see what all comes in here. It's packaged very nice. You can see the weapon's nice and safe. The rifle's nice and safe. Comes with an owner's manual. Don't be like most guys. Don't go honor's manual. Throw it away. You want to hang on to this. It's got a lot of very good, useful, important information in it. Also comes with a couple of Allen wrenches that you can use to do adjustments on the rifle. Comes with sights. These are the new Challenger PCP or the Challenger um, precision sight sets that comes with the rifles now when you order those. Also got a shot record here to show you they fired the rifle off. Let's go ahead and take it out now. Let's get it out. We're going to show you a couple things, but one of the things we want you to have handy is the old handy dandy bipod. Okay, we've got the rifle out of the box, ready to go. reason we wanted you to have this handy, you want to put your a bipod on here. You don't want to lay the rifle on its side. Uh, especially you got CBI in or something like that, you're laying them down on the side. You're putting pressure on this bolt right here. There's a good chance you could bend the bolt. The other thing too is if you've got the old style sights that has the plastic end on it that holds the, the uh, front side on, uh, a lot of times the kids will slam that down on the ground. So, putting the bipod on, the rifle sits up straight like this, nice and safe. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is the sights that comes with the rifle. These are really, really exceptional sights. Most of you guys got the old style sights, like I talked about earlier. Had that plastic piece on it. I don't know about you, my cadets used to bang those things against the ground and break them. These sights are just absolutely fantastic. They're all metal. They're precision sights, which means they're much, much more precise. This is your rear sight. It's an adjustable rear sight, just like the other one, but again, everything's all metal. This is what I really like about it, this new front sight. It's got a metal mount post that goes on it, holds that front sight on the rifle real well. You're not going to get banged around or anything. Also comes with several different sizes of inserts, probably starts about a 3.8, goes up to about a 4.2. And it also comes with a blinder. These blinders that come with them, real nice. They can clip on and clip off. Very, very good. Uh, just a, an exceptional sight. If you don't have these for your rifles, you can purchase these through Crossman. I highly recommend that you go ahead and try to cycle out your old sights and replace them with these new sights. Really a great, great addition to the Crossman Challenger. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the rifle itself. This is really, really an exceptional rifle. You go to a major championship today, any major matches, you walk down a range, you're going to see 99.9% .9 of the teams using these rifles. That's because they're that good. Crossman has put together a really, really great product. They also have, and stand behind their rifles, they also have a good customer service uh, so if you have any problems with your rifles or whatever, you can contact them. Now, as far as care and maintenance, uh, the rifles look brand new. They come out, they're all pretty and everything. But you want to make sure that you're taking care of these. Uh, one of the things that I did as an instructor, when I was an instructor, I issued a thing called Century Marine Tough Cloth. We're going to show you several products here. At the end of the video, we'll tell you where to get a, a, a hold of those, who to contact, and so forth to get those. But this is called Sentry Tough Cloth. Now, it comes in a little package. You tear the package open, and you can reseal it. It's got a, a seal there to reseal it. 
what I used to do is I issued one of these to each of my rifle team members. Now, what I would have them do is every time that they fired, once they completed shooting, they would take this cloth and all they would do is just wipe down the metal parts of the rifle. Now, as you can see, it's pretty shiny there because that's a new cloth. It's got a lot on it. So we would have them take an extra cloth and just wipe that excess off. But I required them to do this every time that they fired a rifle. That keeps any type of, of acid from their sweat or whatever of getting on the barrels and possibly rusting it. The other thing too is when you're storing your rifles, you want to make sure that you're storing your rifles in an armory or someplace that's open, but you also want to have a dehumidifier. You want to keep that humidity down. Don't store your rifles in a rifle case. That foam inside of a rifle case will just attract moisture and can make this rifle rust more. You don't want that. So the tough cloth, have your cadets wipe it down. Once they're done, they can put that tough cloth back in the bag, seal it. And I used to take an extra sandwich bag and just shove it down in there, you know, just to make sure that it wouldn't dry out. That keeps the outside metal parts of this rifle just looking exceptional. Okay, we're going to talk about, we, we talked about wiping the rifle down with a tough cloth and storing it. And obviously, if you were doing any long range storing, if you were storing it for a long period of time, you would want to store it that way too. The other thing is you want to make sure that you have air in the rifle. We recommend that you fill it up. Once you're finished, you fill it up, cock it, fire it off and then just put it away and store it. But before you do that, we want you to uh, run a bore whip through it. Now we'll tell you where you can get the bore whips uh, from. Uh, these are very, very nice item. When you run bore whip, you're gonna spray a little bit of TSI 301. And we'll, uh, again, tell you where to get this from. But this is a high performance synthetic lubricant you're going to spray a little bit of that right on that bore whip. And you have your bolt open and you're just going to slide that bore whip through there. And you want to slide it from the breech end. Get that bore whip through. Pull it completely through. And that oils and cleans the inside of that rifle. Let's say that you have, you're getting ready to put the rifle up for a couple of months. We know kids take a summer break or whatever. Put that synthetic oil on there, run it through the, the bore and put it away. You've wiped it down, you put it away. When you get ready to fire again, we recommend that you take a dry bore whip and you run it through there again, no oil on it or whatever, and that takes that excess oil out that gets rid of all that uh, the oil that's been in there setting for a while and if there was any dust or dirt or whatever got down in the barrel. We recommend again that you use TSI 301. This is rim oil. Very good oil for real weapons. You do not want to use rim oil on the air rifle. There's a reason for this. This is highly flammable. Now, everybody talks about dieseling. Everybody, you fire a, weapon, fire a rifle off and you have dieseling that comes out of the barrel. The problem is with rim oil, if you clean that barrel with rim oil, there's always that residue in there and each time that you fire this, a little bit of that residue, that rim oil is going to get down inside of that valve inside. Uh, we were able actually to reproduce this in the shop here and you can have dieseling inside that valve and, and it will uh, damage the inside of the valve so you don't want to do that. So again, rim oil, no TSI 301, that's what you want to use. The next thing we want to discuss is if you open your bolt and you look right here, you can see a small O-ring. Now, there's a silicon chamber oil that's sewed by Crossman that about every 300 to 500 shots, about every 500 shots that you want to put on that O-ring right there. Now, we have ours in a different bottle because I can get it about two tubes in here and we use quite a bit of this in the shop. But you just take that, put a drop right on there, close your bolt, and that's good to go. 
That'll keep it nice and lubed. That'll keep that O-ring nice and lubed, uh, nice and safe. You'll get plenty of years, of years out of that O-ring. The other thing that we want to talk about is the bolt itself. Now, a lot of people want to try to put all kinds of lubricant down in here. You don't want to do that. You don't want to use all kinds of spray lubricant or anything on this bolt. This bolt comes with a when it's put together they use a graphite that's used to put it together and we recommend that you use uh, something along this line it doesn't have to be molly coat but this is molly coat it's a z powder so you want a silicon graphite and what you do we've got the molly coat put in a, a little bottle that's got a needle uh, valve on it what you do is you turn the rifle upside down and you just take that molly coat and you just put just a little puff. Work the bolt a little bit and that's going to keep you for quite a long time. This molly coat uh, doesn't take a lot. It goes a long way. These bore whips again are great for cleaning the rifle but a lot of people see these things and they say, oh orange, I can use it as a CBI. You don't want to use it as a CBI. This is the, about the smallest weed eater line that you can get. You can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. You can also uh, get these uh, free of charge. You just have to pay shipping uh, from uh, CMP. You can see the difference in these. The problem is, is that a lot of kids will use these bore whips and they're so much thicker that they'll put them in there and then they'll shove that bolt closed. And what that ends up doing is it ends up bending the tip but if you use a, a regular CBI the smallest uh, weed eater line that you can find and you put it in there and they happen to shove that closed it's not going to bend that tip it's actually going to cut this weed eater line and that's what you want to do you want it to cut the line instead of uh, damaging the rifle let's say you have a kid that puts a pellet in and closes a bolt and then he gets to thinking about something else and he goes, did I put a pellet in or not? He raises his hand and he wants you to punch his board. What we recommend that you do is you go to a Home Depot, Lowe's or someplace like this and you get a 1 8 inch dowel. These things are cheap. You could buy a whole bunch of them for a couple of bucks. Uh, it's made out of wood and it's not going to scratch or mess up that barrel any. Just put it down in there, it fits real nice, and you can punch that bore and get the pellet out for them. Hello, I'm Michael Gardner II from Gardner's Challenger Service Center. Uh, I'm also a Crossman trained technician. I'm here to talk to you today about leaks. Uh, a lot of time when, when you're firing, of course, you're going to go through a lot of air, so you'll go and refill it. Uh, when you go to go refill it, if you hear air not filling up the tube, um, if you go through about three or four rifles and they're all making that noise and they're not filling up, then you have an issue with your adapter on your device. Inside here is a small little O-ring. You'll need to get that replaced because if not, you're not going to get any air into these air rifles. Now the second thing is, as you fill it up, you can hear air coming out of the barrel. Well, right there is going to be a problem. First thing you need to make sure you do is charge it. If you charge your rifle and everything's going fine, you fill it up here, there's no air out here, you have charged it, and you come back and look and you realize on your meter that, hey, I'm slowly losing air. Uh, what you can do, a little trick you can do, get yourself some three-in-one oil. Do not use water. Water and metal do not mix. Take the adapter and you can stick it down into the a little bowl and if it's leaking you're going to see little air bubbles start to come up. That tells you right there that you have a leak in your adapter. Now if you do that and you don't see any air get yourself a dropper. Drop some oil right around your meter. You will see bubbles start to be created right around this meter. After you've had this rifle for several years at some point you may end up with an air leak. If you do and you've checked to see in a, in a little oil bucket or an oil can or something like that and you see air bubbles you need to definitely and it's highly recommended that you send this to a Crossman Repair Center. 
Okay, that's uh, just basically a little bit of care and maintenance of the Crossman Challenger air rifle. Again, these things have a very, very long life. Uh, you're probably not going to get leaks, but again, if you do, uh, contact a Crossman Certified Repair Center. All of the products and everything that we showed you, we're going to blip those up on the screen as we go out. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns, you can contact us. Uh, all of our contact information will be displayed as well. I'd like to really thank uh, Crossman uh, for uh, the opportunity to, uh, to talk about this rifle. Uh, uh, they have put together a really, really outstanding product. Uh, again, like I said, if you go down in a major competition, you're going to see 99.9% .9 of the rifle teams using these. They're that good. Uh, Again, thank you. If you have any questions, concerns, again, give us a call. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to get out at some of the rifle matches here real soon and see some of you guys out, uh, out there and be able to, to join up and meet up with everybody again. Uh, all my Marine buddies out there, Semper Fi, thank you for watching the video. Again, like us on Facebook. And we'll talk to you later from Gardner's Challenger Service in Gray, Tennessee. It's Mike Gardner. See you next time.